So I wanted to give you my final video on the WL Toys stuff. Uh, and the reason is they make a couple of different versions of this remote. In fact, three. And this one they have made three different versions with. Now, every few years, this company comes out with new aircraft. And when they do, they add a new remote. And the old one stops being made. And the only real difference is the chip inside and how it's programmed. Um, they basically swap out their protocols every so often, which means things like bind procedure may change. Maybe not. I don't know. Um I've had nothing but problems with that. And the reason is they have a factory original bind procedure. When you get a ready-to-fly aircraft, it leaves bound. This company apparently uses an awkward bind procedure from the factory <clears throat> that I wasn't able to find. Ah, I had a real trouble. I couldn't find a manual for this. I'm still not clear what the, uh, the arming procedure is supposed to be for this remote. I've had it for a month. I've looked it up 20 times. I, I had somebody on a forum... Uh, give me the most useful information and even still it would seem they were wrong because nothing I did worked It turned out what the answer was is that these are bound from the factory and they don't actually release the factory Original bind procedure What it what they do tell you is the it's already bound. This is how you bind it But once it until it's been bound the first time they really don't like to bind to anything and apparently the factory has a big long process for doing it now, that being said, I haven't been able to get this remote to work with the WL Toys receivers that I bought, and I haven't been able to get this remote to work with it, and I've literally tried just about every bind procedure you can think of. I've done it all, folks. That being said, I don't recommend WL Toys. On another note, um, the prior video to this one shows a the board that I was working with. Now, in that one, I was showing you guys a bypass. Yo, it's an engineering channel. And that, <clears throat> at the beginning of that video, I said, do your research. Look up the board. Okay, well, this is an engineering course. And you need to look up the board. Because that board was for an aircraft. And if you just look up the board, okay, it's a board. It's compatible with these remotes. That's about all it tells you. But it, what it didn't tell you was that those are not four servo connections and one gyro connection. Those are four motor connections and one servo connection because it's a direction. It's a differential thrust based aircraft. That being said, it has four engines. Uh, it's based on a 747. It's a model out by WL Toys. You can go and see it for yourself. That being said, uh, Partly that exercise was designed to teach students that they really need to do the research. Otherwise, they could spend hours and hours wasting their time looking like the fool and doing work that could very well damage the piece they're working on uh, or at the very least lead them to make additional mistakes. <clears throat> what they need to do is do their research before they start work. Know what you're doing before you start working. A competent engineer does not make mistakes, guys. Mistakes are unacceptable. They can be solved simply by doing your research. In this case, that has led me to the fact that I'm not going to be using WL Toys uh, for my preferred remote. I'm actually going to be using a FlySky i6. Uh, tons of people have recommended them, but I can't recommend them either. Uh, and the reason is the same. I, I, I bought the protocol module that has mo a lot of WL Toys stuff on it. It doesn't work. There's a four chip module that I have seen for that remote. I wish I had had the money to grab it when I saw it. I've never seen it since. Uh, that being said, given that those things are so hard to get, you can't just buy an i6 and use it with ev absolutely everything. They make it sound like that, but you really can't. In fact, when you look at the i6, it only actually has one protocol built into it, and it's fly scuts. So I have this. I have a bunch of FlySky compatible stuff that is coming so that I won't have to have the module. But I also got the module um, and installed it. And I can't tell if it works or not because it's a range extender for one. And that's test tough to test when I don't have a receiver board that works. Uh, so I have receivers coming that are all FlySky. Um, three. And I have enough servos, I should be able to do up a couple of aircraft and start my testing procedure. That being said, when that's done, I will recommend a remote for you guys for now. 
Don't buy anything until I'm done my testing. Do your research. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, I've seen tons of people recommend this one for beginners, and so far I just don't. Because unless you're just going to go fly sky, in which case point there's no point. You may as well go for something a little cheaper than to spend 80 bucks on the remote. In my case, it was 70 but it came with the strap and a bunch of other stuff. It was cool. Um, but basic. And given that a digital remote is very expensive, this is the cheapest decent one I've seen. It has a decent menu. There's a lot of different functions, but they're a bit confusing in the way they're laid out. They're not the same type of functions I'm used to. And it has a learning curve that comes with this, which means if you really are a beginner, this is probably not the right one for you just because it's complicated. You are way better off for your very first aircraft. Go buy a ready-to-fly aircraft. Use the dang remote that comes with it. That's my recommendation. Keith out.